Hello everyone, Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, AZY Securities, and I trust you're having a good day. Now, I have a subject uh, that's uh, not easy to speak about and has certainly been given, because of that, been given scant coverage in the Australian financial media or any media at all, really, as it has to do with, of course, national security here in Australia or the perceptions of that. And it relates to, of course, the growing geopolitical tensions in the China Sea and in particular reference to Taiwan. Australia has recently joined a new treaty, which was uh, very much about the old first world of the UK and the US and Australia locking into that in terms of nuclear submarines and nuclear submarine bases, immediately providing access to our bases and developing our bases for nuclear submarine visits here in Australia, uh, whilst having a very long lag time of 10, 15, perhaps even 20 years before Australia gets a nuclear submarine. Coming on top of that has been uh, just released in the last week, the defence white paper, which showed that the Australian Defence Forces were not fit for purpose. Now, this is something a lot of us have been alluding to for quite some time, so that wasn't really a surprise. Australia's Defence Forces do need a major shake-up. Uh, and to their credit, they've been doing as well as they could with the existing structure, but it will be good to see them move forward. Now, what's difficult to speak about uh, but all traders and investors really need to be aware of this because for all we know, it could become a dominant issue moving forward that really determines fully 100% what happens with, say, the Australian dollar or the Australian equity market for that matter. So it does need to be discussed because not to discuss it is to do a disservice uh, to traders and investors on what they need to be just at least aware of at the margin, if not focused on. And that is that if we in Australia had a nation building against uh, a big military buildup in relation to us, we'd be a little bit upset about that. And while China is, of course, involved in a massive military buildup, uh, China already has, in case you weren't aware, China already has the largest navy in the world uh, and is continuing to build. So, and you know, its military and its air forces we know are very advanced in terms of equipment. In fact, the Chinese have hypersonic missiles with I believe a range of around 2,100 miles uh, already deployed uh, both land and sea. Uh, whilst, or, well, I'm not sure about the sea, but certainly deployed on land missile launches. While the US conducted a test of its budding hypersonic missile near Hawaii in the past two weeks and it fell into the ocean or something went wrong. So the US does not possess these weapons. No other nations on earth possess these weapons except for Russia. So the Chinese have a powerful military buildup. The thing is, their military buildup is about their place in the world as a superpower and a government of 21% of the world's population. Is their buildup disproportionate? Perhaps, but only at the margin. Because if you're a nation representing over a fifth, nearly a quarter of the world's population, it's only natural that you need a significant military capability. Um, I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying one follows the other, and that's been the nature of the world since human beings, you know, first developed fire. So nothing's going to change with that matter, and that's just how the world functions. Every nation on Earth has a military capability it thinks appropriate to its circumstances. So China, what I'm trying to say is China's military buildup is not aimed at Australia. But Australia's military buildup, I'm not sure it's, it does seem to be related to China. Well, it certainly seems to be related to fitting in 
with UK and US military capabilities. I think that's probably uh, the most accurate way of, of describing Australia's military buildup. Now, I'm not saying a military buildup is inappropriate or wrong. I'm just going to now say the things that are uncomfortable for many people to say, and that is this not only is looked on with unhappiness in China, but it has to make and is making, and this is really the point I'm making, it's not China's response, this is the point I really want to make, is that a lot around and amongst money managers the world over, from India to, you know, to Geneva, to the US, to the UK, to the Middle East, it's making people wonder how exposed Australia could be to a conflict. And even before that point, it's making money managers, fund managers, investors around the world wonder if this is not going to derail some of Australia's exports, both mineral and agriculture, to China. Some of Australia's economic relationships with China could suffer as a result of these particular developments. So is that really a good thing for Australia's economy moving forward long term? If there was a threat to our own nation, then obviously we should definitely be building. And some people think that is the case. I'm not sure it is actually myself personally, but that's just a purely personal view. Um, but it doesn't matter what whether you what your view is on the military buildup. It doesn't matter what your view is on the China view of that military buildup or your view of the Chinese buildup. What I'm talking about here is that there's going to be a slight pause for thought among global investors regarding the sense of overly investing in Australia. <laughs> there, I've said the uncomfortable thing. Um, and I remember there was one article that did occur recently, and I can't remember quite where it was now, but there was an article about suggesting that Australia risked becoming the Ukraine of the South. Now, I don't think that's the case at all. That's definitely not the case. That's a non-starter. But it stretches the mind in a way that makes us aware that global investors would rethink their Australian investment. Now, they're not going to pull their investments out of Australia based on this. But the future flow of trade to China could be diminished to less than it would have otherwise been. Uh, and that includes both mining and agriculture. China will, was already and now will increasingly look elsewhere for anything that it currently gets from Australia that it could get from another country, for instance, such as Brazil. So those efforts will be probably increased on China's part. So the potential export path for Australian minerals, agriculture to China that trajectory has been diminished, I would say, by our decision to have these massive military buildups in relation to fitting in with UK and US forces in the region. I think that's true. I don't think anyone probably would argue with that. And yet it's such an uncomfortable issue to speak about. I have previously said that if any accidental military conflict happened, and it could, between US and Chinese forces, that you may well see an immediate selling off in both the Australian dollar and the Australian stock market. And I don't mean devastatingly so, but significantly so. And that is a risk that traders and investors should at all times be aware of. Um, I don't think there is going to be a conflict but I do think our export trajectory to China is already diminished. And I do think there is now a consideration that was not there before among global investors 
as to whether all of the investments they were thinking of making into Australia over the next one, two, five, ten years are actually fully prudent now, and they may be diminished as well. So I just think they're factors that people should consider and take into their personal consultation on where they think markets will go, will go. But I do think it is a current weight as it is a new development and present of mind to a lot of global investors. It is an immediate and current weight to both the Australian dollar and perhaps to Australian mining companies and large agricultural companies stock prices. So there, I finally got that out to everyone. I hope I haven't offended anyone. It's a, a very narrow line to walk there. Uh, but I think, you know, the basic principles are correct and uncontested. That is, regardless of whether it's right or wrong, China is not happy at, to some degree. Uh, and I do believe that definitely Australia Australia's exports to China could still increase or they could diminish. But whatever that is, that will be a path that is lower than it would have otherwise been. Hence, global investor consideration of the developing situation. Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities. But hey, isn't it great we've got all the financial instruments we need to manage these fast evolving uh, exposures and uh, look after our investment portfolios in a healthy way. Thanks again, Clifford Bennett.